Hello everybody and welcome back to our channel. Two Brothers Outdoors if you didn't already recognize us. If you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hit that subscription button. You don't want to miss any of our future videos, so hit the bell as well. Alright guys, so today we're going to continue the series of uh, the Old World Craftsman, John Loss. The last segment we had with John, he took a hard maple log like this, took it home, pulled the log out of his truck, and broke it down to make some custom stools. So today we're going to continue on with the custom stools and how he makes them. A lot of the tools that he uses are tools that they used back in the 1700s to build Windsor chairs and stools and, and furniture like this. Master Craftsman arts like this is going to be lost one day and we won't have them anymore. All right, so as a bonus, somewhere in this video, I'm going to put a segment in of John putting together a Windsor chair that he's already made all the parts for. And I think you'll enjoy that as well. If you see anything in these videos that John makes that you'd like to have made or would you you would like to buy you can contact us and we can get a hold of John for you directly all right guys so with a log like this let's see what John is up to today oh and I'd also like to mention see this hat right here this is a Hudson hat sent to me by Hudson I'm very particular about the hats I wear I like a very comfortable hat. I don't like anything hard in the front right here. This is one nice hat. I tell you, this is probably one of the nicest hats I own. And I appreciate Hudson sending us out the hats. Okay, guys, let's get on with the video. We a couple of days uh, uh, with the blanks. I allowed them to, to dry just a little bit. Now, I remounted uh, my billet, and I'm going to use a story stick, which basically... Uh, tells me uh, where I'm going to make my uh, major uh, changes uh, in terms of uh, uh, my cuts as, as far as uh, the lathe is concerned. And so th th this very simple, common way of doing it, have my lines all set. And then it's just a case of uh, carrying the line uh, all the way around. Can even run the machine at the same at, at this stage. Okay. I'm going to uh, use my gouge now to start uh, doing the shaping uh, on the legs. So it's a case of using the lines that I have already put on. And working myself down. So it's pretty straightforward in terms of uh, lathe work. As things stand now, I have uh, my legs shaped uh, and they need to dry. So we, I won't get back to the legs again for uh, about three, four weeks while the, uh, while the legs are drying. And incidentally, I'm working on two uh, stools. And they're a little bit unusual, uh, first of all, because they're a three-legged stool and they have to be fit to the individual that's going to be using them. And the second thing that makes it uh, unique in this situation is that it's a taller stool than I normally do. So I'll give you some idea as to what's going on. But we are going to use uh, the Windsor uh, techniques and joinery as much as we can uh, in this development. So our next phase will be uh, to work on the seat. Okay, guys, as promised, before John starts the shaping of the seat for the stool, we're going to let John assemble a Windsor chair that he's already made the parts for. This is just a quick segment, but you can see how these chairs are put together. Each part is handmade by John. Every joint in this chair is tapered 
And the joints are designed so that as the chair dries, the joints get tighter. John does apply a little glue to the joints when he puts it together, but the chair pretty much stays together by itself without the glue. It's an amazing process. As John turns this chair, you will see how the chair seat is shaped to fit the human anatomy. Now, we'll watch how he does this process on the stool seat after this segment is over. Now, as John installs these spindles, you'll notice that he twists the spindles after he taps them in. Well, the spindles are shaped elliptically, number one, to provide comfort for your back and number two to help the spindles lock into the holes. Most chairs and most stools that John builds are finished in milk paint finish. And we'll get John to explain that finish in a future video. I have two pieces of uh, uh, white uh, pine uh, glued together uh, to give me a wide enough uh, uh, space for uh, my seat. I'm using a template, I, or I use the template to draw out uh, the seat, and I cut it out with the uh, bandsaw. Now at this stage, I'm going to uh, take the bandsaw marks out with the spoke shave. All I'm trying to do is get a smooth surface, and I do use two different spoke shaves. One takes off a little finer Uh, shaving than the other one does. And then we will commence uh, with the next stage in the process. Okay. I have my markings on my uh, seat and what I'm going to try to do, this is a two inch uh, piece of pine and uh, what I'm going to try to do is to uh, chamfer uh, one part of it so that it reduces from the out uh, f uh, from observation that it's actually thinner than what it looks like, or looks thinner than what it actually is. So this is all draw knife work at this stage. You can take a, a lot of wood off in a very short period of time with the draw knife. And I'll follow up the draw knife with the spoke shave. And I'll continue all the way around uh, on the bottom of my seat. Uh, so now we'll come to the stage of saddling the seat. In other words, I'm going to take out wood here to make it more comfortable to sit in. And it's going to have a definite effect on uh, aesthetics as well. But the uh, main goal here is comfort. Uh, this is a scorp, uh, also called an in-shave. Uh, very popular uh, with chair makers. Uh, also, uh, uh, Coopers uh, use them, only s slightly different. And a number of other uh, tradespeople uh, that had uh, scorps, uh, various designs. Anyway, it's a case of slowly taking the wood away. You notice that there are various marks on on 
on uh, my seat, and the purpose of those marks uh, are, th are reference points for me. Uh, I've drilled two holes to give me a depth, a sense of how deep I need to go uh, in this particular process. And I've mounted the seat on the edge so that I can work this side as well as coming over and working over on this side as well. In other words, be able to get all around the seat. And that'll take us up to our next step. Uh, shaping the, or saddling the seat, shaping the seat, and I'm going to use a compass plane. It has a rounded bottom on it and a, uh, a blade similar to a bench plane. So even though I'm getting a finer shaving than what I was getting with the scorp, I'm still working on shaping. So it's rather a crude surface that I'm leaving. And we'll pick up with that with our next tool. Our step in our saddling process uh, is to go with a travis. And I, I have two one is a much older uh, model. It has a slightly uh, a different radius uh, than my larger, newer one. But basically what we're t doing is we're taking off a very, very thin slice of wood. So in comparison to, um, to the scorp that we originally started the saddling process, we're now to a uh, uh, almost a micro uh, size uh, uh, piece of wood. So we're going to get an a extremely uh, smooth surface, although some of the tool marks will still be in there. And the uh, process after the travisher would be to use um, a cabinet scraper. And in this particular case, because of the contours of the seat, uh, it's not a straight edge uh, uh, piece of steel, spring steel. It does have uh, some some um, curvature to it. And this is the procedure. Worst comes to worst, it would end up with uh, sandpaper. Uh, some people do not go to the um, uh, the scraper. Uh, uh, they end up with the travisher. I don't think I have the talent to do that, and the people that I uh, do the stools for and the chairs uh, want a smoother surface than, than uh, what the travisher leaves. And that uh, completes the saddling uh, of our stool. I'm in the process of uh, uh, saddling and forming the front top of the seat. Uh, using a draw knife and what's going to happen is I'm going to take this flap down so that it's going to uh, conceal the two inch thickness of uh, the seat so that the, as we end up here we're going to end up with three legs on this seat and that's where I've left uh, uh, the bulk of the two, uh, two inch uh, seat so it's going to be the strongest. So I'm working with my draw knife And I'm also going to use a, a pummel knife. And the difference between this and the draw knife is the straight arm. I'm able to get in here to saddle where the leg is going to go. One of the keys to the stool, as well as a chair for that matter, is to... Uh, Give the back of the leg room so that uh, you don't bind it and uh, the leg falls asleep. Okay. Okay, we're going to drill uh, the three holes uh, for the legs. Uh, and remember that uh, these are compound angles, which basically means we've got two different angles to take into consideration when we drill the hole. And through a, uh, a, fo a formula, I have a sight line that I'm going to follow uh, with the drill uh, and uh, uh, with my uh, bevel square. And we should come out all right. Now, underneath, I have uh, two uh, 
uh, backer boards with the idea that I'm not to prevent uh, blowing out the hole at the other end. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. Uh, the next step will be uh, uh, to turn over the, the stool and uh, fit the legs to it. So that's where we'll stop right now. The process of uh, fitting uh, the leg uh, to the stool uh, with the chair as well, we'll call it legging up. This is a meticulous process. Uh, can't rush it. This has to be perfect. So I have a reamer, and I'm going to uh, increase the hole. Remember, we drilled the hole from the, the top of the seat. Now I'm working at the bottom of the seat. Just a couple of turns. And I'm going to use a false leg that I used to, to get my measurements, make sure my angles are correct. Make an adjustment. One more time. my leg fits and then we'll glue up after I get the other two holes reamed out and uh, we'll glue up and wedge in